Good afternoon all. This is my covered work area. Um, it's not going to be my workshop, it's going to be where I'm going to build my workshop. Um, now the thing I want about this place is I want it to be well lit. Well that's easy, I can put uh, 12 volt lighting coming down from these rafters. But I also want it to be warm and that might be a bit more tricky. But the answer might be in this box which you can't see because it's out of shot. Yes, the answer may very well be in this box, so let's take a little look inside. Now, I just want to say that this has been very kindly supplied to me by Banggood.com, so thank you very much to Banggood. Right, let's see what we've got. And the first thing is a very large uh, fuel tank. Diesel, 10 litre fuel tank. Okay. What else have we got in here? Well, a box of bits, uh, manual, a plate, a mounting plate, a fuel line, and oh, um, electronics, and electrics, and the fuel pump, and the little control knob, and um, bits of pipe and stuff like that. Yes, this is a diesel heater. So let's take a look in this box on this side. Because this is where the heater is. And this is it. It's a model FJH8. It's uh, supposedly 8 kilowatts. And it runs on 12 volts. Well, that's good because I've got a 12 volt battery nearby. Um, we've got air in, air out, um, combustion air in exhaust out, fuel in, and a connector here which connects up to the control panel. And uh, I'm thinking I'll probably, oh you can't see me, I'm thinking I'll probably mount this uh, on this wall over here, it comes with a bracket and I'll put some um, probably decking timber on the wall here and then put some brackets to mount that. 12 volts is on the battery just over there, so yeah, it'll fit there nicely. I'll have to um, divert the exhaust away from uh, sort of either of the air intakes. Really what I want to do is divert the exhaust out of this uh, covered area, but I think that's where it's going to be mounted. But uh, before I do any of that, I want to um, of course see how this works. So let's take it inside and let's take it apart. Right, let's check this thing out. Um, it is pretty big, so uh, I'm going to try and strip it down a bit. That's the cover for the fuel inlet. This is a gasket to seal uh, this part around the uh, combustion air inlet and combustion exhaust. I'm not really sure which one's which at the moment. Um, okay, so this little cover on the end just kind of rotates off and that allows me to undo these clips and lift this part of the lid. So let's do that one clip, two clips, that piece comes off. Oh, looks like the lid of the electronics has fallen off, but that might be a good thing actually, because that might enable us to see what's on that circuit board. And, hmm, all sorts of interesting bits. But uh, I can't really look at this close up um, until I've got it off this unit. So let's disconnect the three connectors. We've got this one, which is the uh, blue and red wires which go to the glow plug. So let's take that one off. We can get to that. Right, so that's the glow plug. Um, then there's a bunch of wires soldered onto pads here which come out onto this multi-way uh, connector. On the other side of the board we've got the DC motor connection there. And then this one I've marked with a blue X because it's got a blue and white wire. That one goes over to this sensor here in the combustion chamber. Now I'm not sure whether it's a flame detector or a temperature sensor uh, yet. So let's take that one off. And then that should uh, liberate the electronics so that I can undo this screw and get that board out. Right, let's undo that. It's still um, sort of balanced on the two pipes on the bottom, so it's a little bit wobbly. And that should release that. 
and yes, that's the circuit board off. Um, just looking at the other components here for a moment, we've got um, a DC motor that says DC motor 12 volts, and then there's a few other numbers on that. And we've got um, a large impeller here. Now this is the one that sucks air in through the main air intake and just blows it across the unit over all these veins. And then the air comes out the other end as hot air, presumably. And then inside this uh, module here, which I will take apart, there's another impeller. You can just about see it through the one of the uh, pipes leading in. And uh, that sucks in um, air for oxygen into the combustion area and then blows exhaust out of the other pipe, um, these two pipes down here. In fact, let's take this out of its case so that we can see the uh, metalwork a bit easier. So let's just slide that outer casing off. Uh, there's an option here, just a few um, heat resistant sort of mounts to stop vibration, but it's just a plastic case really. Well, I'm just going to put this to one side uh, for a moment, the actual heater, so that I can um, concentrate on the oops, on the electronic board. Now, at first glance, this looks like um, a microcontroller here and some sort of high power switching devices. These might be PWM controllers, possibly. I'm going to have to look those up. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's just a smaller version. It's got multi legs. Um, yeah, I'm not quite entirely sure what that is. But let's think about what it's controlling. It's controlling um, the DC motor for the main air impeller and the combustion impeller. Um, it's also controlling the fuel pump. It has to pulse the fuel pump to drive fuel into the combustion chamber. Uh, what else is it driving? It's driving the, um, the glow plug. So maybe there's a, just an on-off switch for the glow plug. Perhaps that's that small one. Actually, um, the glow plug was, hmm. Yeah, the glow plug was this connector. So logically, uh, we'd assume that this is the controller for the glow plug. But let me just take a look at what um, the part number of one of these and try and find a data sheet. So this one is an S50085A. This one's the same, but this one's different. This is a, a 4271-2G. Um, so let's try and look both of those up. Right, so the uh, S50085 is a smart high side high current power switch um, with all sorts of overload protections, uh, reverse battery protections. Uh, what have we got? 70 volts, output clamp 62 volts, 9 milli ohms, 44 amps for load current. Uh, it says here it replaces um, electromechanical relays, fuses, and discrete circuits. Uh, power switch with current sense diagnostic feedback for up to 48 uh, volt DC grounded loads. Most suitable for loads with high inrush current like lamps and motors, all types of resistors and resistive and inductive loads. Okay, so it's a high side power switch, so fully integrated into a sort of multi-pin package. So there are two of those, um, which are these two up here. This one here actually is just a five volt regulator. It's this thing. Uh, it's the 4271-2, five volt, low dropout, fixed voltage regulator, but it's got a few extra inputs for things like watchdog and reset. Uh, so a few additional smarts. Uh, this little device down here is another one of these high side power switches. It's obviously a lower power and it may have different uh, functionality. I've done a brief lookup of that. So these are just power switches. You can probably PWM them, I would imagine. And this is almost certainly a microcontroller. I'll just have a quick look at that one. So the microcontroller is an NXP, uh, that thing. It's an 8-bit CPU, central processor unit, uh, 20 meg internal bus frequency. Um, it's got memory options. So it looks like you can have a reasonable amount of memory. It's got ADC, SCI, SPI, uh, I squared C timers, and possibly a keyboard input. So it's a microcontroller. So this, this here, which is either the flame detector or the, or a temperature sensor just goes through, um, a few resistors and capacitors straight into one of the microcontrollers inputs 
So uh, the microcontroller is just reading that. It's controlling uh, these two outputs, which are the DC motor and the um, glow plug. And then this one possibly is controlling the fuel pump via one of these lines. We could have a closer look at these colors a bit later on. Now, interestingly, um, there's a little channel down here with nothing fitted into it. Uh, let's take a look at where this sits in relation to the main fan. Uh, the main fan, which has these two little magnets in it, but it doesn't look to me like this board has any uh, Hall Effect sensor on it. And if it did have, it would probably be sat in there so that it could pick up the signal from these two magnets. So it looks like um, possibly the design had an ability to check that the DC motor was running and now it doesn't, or at least not from the magnet feedback. Possibly it can measure um, current drawn by the DC motor and it's perhaps doing it that way now. But it looks like some things have sort of changed as this design has matured. Right, I've just stuck a couple of pins in the motor connector and I'm just going to stick 9 volts on that 12 volt motor. Oh, that looks a bit close. And uh, let's just see if it'll spin up. Yeah, so there it goes. And of course that is also turning the... There's a little bit of rubbing on there. I think it's rubbing on this, whatever this is. Some sort of centering um, frame, I think. It's got all these four posts sticking out of it. It does seem to be rubbing just ever so slightly on that motor. I suppose that would uh, wear down <laughs> over time, wouldn't it? But yeah, that runs. And as I say, that's a single shaft uh, pushed into this impeller or propeller um, and also the one that's inside here. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to have to remove these uh, four screws. And it looks like there's a gasket in there. Well, I know there's a gasket in there because I've kind of done this already. So these screws are loose because I didn't do them up tight after the last time I took this apart. Let's take uh, these four screws out and try and lift uh, this part of the casing away from the other part. So just spin these out. And then I'll very carefully lift it off just to make sure that nothing fouls. Right, here we go. Let's lift this off. And yes, that comes off. And there is um, a gasket there. I don't know, it looks like steel, maybe stainless steel. So I'm going to move all that part aside and we'll just take a look at the motor and fan assembly. So this is the uh, sort of cool end assembly. Uh, this is the main air fan or impeller that sucks air in there and blows it through. Uh, the main unit. Now there is a second impeller here which you can see. Oh that's interesting there's a little cut out there. I wonder if that's been done for balancing purposes. It's a very um, close fit to the casting here. That's only probably half a millimeter so I presume that's so there's it's kind of a seal but not quite a seal. So it's going to be sucking air in from the uh, inlet. Now you put a um, uh, an air filter on here to prevent gunk getting in. It's going to be sucking it in and throwing it out of this uh, corner area here into uh, presumably what is the combustion area. So this must be a high temperature plastic would be my guess. And then the other pipe was fairly close behind this one. That's the exhaust pipe. Um, so this is just a single motor with a single shaft driving essentially these two fans. Um, the DC motor being inside this black area here. Okay, let's look at the rest of the casting. Right, so in here we can see uh, the fuel inlet which runs down this pipe uh, through this uh, sort of gasket thing here. The, the metal gasket sits on top of there and into this little um, cylindrical area here and that's the glow plug. So I think what I'll do is I'll take the glow plug out and that will enable me to take this piece out. So let's just remove the glow plugs uh, rubber covering. And we can see the two wires running down to uh, the glow plug there. Let's start unscrewing that. So 12 mil spanner on there. 
and that's the glow plug loose and now I can just rotate it on its wires so let's see there 10 volt okay let's take that out have a little close-up look at that um, okay well I'm not familiar with glow plugs but um, there seems to be a short coil there at the top and then I'm guessing this is a sort of ceramic element of some sort but uh, yeah that's a 10 volt glow plug okay that's out so now I'll undo these four screws and try and lift whatever that is out and this is obviously where the burning takes place because the glow plug will ignite the fuel that's being pumped up through this pipe and then uh, that all takes place inside here is my guess right so let's lift this out this um red sort of washer thing is going to come out with it oh and that's a long pipe and then inside there is uh, the chamber the burning chamber now we've got these two wires going to something on the edge of that Let's see if we can see that ah right in here um, there's no actual connection through to where this sensor is so that must just be a temperature sensor sitting on the surface of all this aluminium because there's absolutely no breach through into that area it's just an empty chamber when the where the burning takes place I guess and I'm not sure what this gasket is made of but it's obviously designed for very high temperature use it almost looks a bit like lead or something like that um, some sort of compress yeah it does look a bit like lead it doesn't feel like lead but uh, yeah that's obviously a high temperature gasket put that back in there and we'll just have a look at where the fuel comes in so clearly fuel comes uh, down this pipe in here and into this chamber here where the glow plug normally sits there's some gauze in there but there's also this hole here so I don't quite know what that is why there's a hole there um, and then if I shine light in through where the glow plug goes and we look in down inside there we can see clearly that the fuel enters this chamber there's some more gauze in there and then presumably it's just burnt inside this chamber here interesting and uh, clearly the air which is made to circulate with that um, impeller the brown one it then forces air through these channels and that must end up inside here where it all gets mixed with the fuel and burnt and everything gets hot so actually in this unit there is only one moving part and that is um, the DC motor which just spins drives these two um, fans effectively or impellers uh, this one which is the main air flow into the unit and over the hot parts to blow hot air out of the back end of the unit and this one of course is the um, to pull air in for combustion but yeah one moving part so well it should be quite reliable if there's only one moving part and um, some fairly straightforward electronics you'd think and uh, just so that you can see all the parts here they are on the floor the main um, metal block which is just a casting really and a temperature sensor mounted on the outside are uh, the plastic casing this sort of combustion thing with the fuel pipe and then as I say the only moving part which is the motor with the two fans on it that's the diesel heater and that's the teardown so now all I've got to do is uh, put this all back together again line everything up let's get that gasket lined up put the uh, combustion thing down inside there with its little rubber seal that fits kind of in there I think so yeah I'm going to put this all back together and uh, that's it for this sort of teardown video and then the next video uh, on this thing will be firing it up cheerio